are you an alien? Well, that's one hell of a question to ask you to start off the video, but it's a genuine one because there has been recent claims made that a CIA whistleblower has come out to say that the CIA have been testing people and testing their DNA to see if they have inserts or extracts of extraterrestrial DNA within their genome. Um, and this is absolutely wild because I see people in my comment section all the time saying, we are the aliens, we are the aliens. And I've always thought, man, you're crazy. But no, it, they could actually be onto something. Um, and lesson learned to me for dismissing things like that so quickly. But actually, we might this we might truly be the aliens. And this isn't the first time um, that this has kind of come out. Um, because, well, we're going we're gonna to dive into it. It's absolutely insane so we've got two inserts here one from um one person in particular but there is another one on a very very recent podcast that came out yesterday at the time of recording on the danny jones podcast and he says that an alien abductee brain scans reveal a ga gateway to hidden world and this is from sean espion hargens all right so that's the guest now I've absolutely butchered that name, but we're going to take a look at the first clip first, and then we're going to get into Sean's claims. Um, but this this is where things get so... Like, this could level humans up to, like, level 1,000. Time for you to share. And sharing meaning all the stuff that you worked with the CIA or the exposure to, you know, the beings and these visions? The work was what exposure I had to the reality that there are craft, they're real, and that there are beings in, in these craft that are here for a purpose, for a reason. And that reason is not so much to warn us of impending doom or anything like that, but to remind us that we're stewards of this planet and that we're doing a terrible job of that. Do you believe we inherited the planet or do you believe there was extraterrestrials here um, way before us that started this? Well, to answer your question, I believe we are also extraterrestrials. I think we were brought here. Now, this is what people say to me in my comment section. And I'm like, I, I just dismiss it. Or I don't dismiss it. I, like, I always allow every opinion to be valid on this channel because it is. Um, and I never delete comments and I never sway narratives. You know, I allow people to say what if, if you've got a religious outlook, it's welcome. If you've got a scientific outlook, it's welcome. If you've got a skeptical outlook, it's welcome. All right. But I always kind of think like, well, maybe, but actually, no, I think what I did was I perceived it the wrong way. I perceived it as we would be extraterrestrials to other terrestrials. And I'm like, well, yeah, obviously, you know, we would be aliens. If aliens came here, we would be aliens to them. But actually what they meant was we genuinely are aliens who were brought to earth. Um, and this is this is the thought. And that we forgot our origins. And that some of the beings that are being encountered by humans today have been here a long, long time. And they may have had some input into how we develop. And that they have our best interests in mind. But they're concerned about the stewardship of the planet. That we are doing a terrible job of taking care of their planet and our planet. And that... Now, this would obviously make sense in the context of the nuclear situ situation that we have, where it's been documented and witnessed uh, with nuclear warheads being disarmed in midair or nuclear warheads being disarmed in, in bunkers and bases um, by these strange craft that just kind of sit there. And when you kind of piece, it's like all the, they're all pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. You've got, like, the, the nuclear situation is one piece of the puzzle. This CIA agent whistleblower is another piece of the puzzle. And, when you, and then when you kind of, like, piece it together in your mind, it all kind of perfectly slots into place and creates this bigger picture about what's truly going on. And I think that that's what we're doing. I don't think we're going to get to a point where we need disclosure. I don't think we're going to need alien disclosure by our governments because I think we're going to have enough pieces from whistleblowers to piece together this jigsaw to get a greater picture of what's going on when we explode nuclear weapons in our atmosphere like we did decades ago and not only affected us it affected them as well and so that's why they're so interested in us especially after what we call the nuclear age dawned upon us 
that we now have the means to destroy ourselves. Right. And by destroying ourselves, we're also destroying them. I think we're their children. And that they have, like a concerned parent, they want us to grow up, but they're giving us enough leeway to become cosmic adults, if you will. And that once we become cosmic adults, we can then join them in the full knowledge of our true origins and why we're here and what our purpose is. And perhaps we can then join them in becoming a spacefaring planet with them. Very well said, John. Now, obviously, from the outside looking in, that interview was mental. Like, you, you, if I was to watch this, say, a year ago, when I wasn't as deep into the UFO stuff as I am now, I would have watched that and been like, what a nut job. Like, that guy, like, get him an Oscar. You know, he's done well. But looking at it with what I, the knowledge that I have now built up over the past few months of kind of researching this topic further and presenting it for you guys, it doesn't sound so crazy. And I probably sound crazy for saying that. And a year ago, old, a year ago, Ben would be looking at this Ben and being like, what are you on about, you absolute nutter? But no, it, it does make perfect sense. Now, moving forwards to yesterday at the time of recording, um, we've obviously got this alien abductee, Sean Espion Hargens. Um, and the segment of the podcast is over an, two hours long. So if you want to check out the full one, you need to go to the Danny Jones podcast and just search it up, you'll find it. Um, but he does go on to talk about... Um, evidence of extraterrestrial life and again talking about this whole kind of cia dna searching thing let's take a little listen. what the disclosure is like what are what are they disclosing specifically are they saying that these are ets coming from zeta reticuli or are these things that right. exist like in a, a like here with us but in another dimension or in another like dmt elves right. that people can just see right. on a regular basis because would it have a difference? Would the implications change? A little bit. But the way this study was done was just around Biden or, you know, the president. Saying that an, an alien landed on the White House lawn. Or them just saying, acknowledging a non-human presence. Not even getting into the details around, is it flesh and blood? Is it um, interdimensional? Is it, you know, is it an ultra-terrestrial? Meaning, like, mm -hmm. they're here and have been living here for a long time and we just right. haven't seen them. Right. And this is the other thing. It's like part of my study of this phenomena using my integral approach is I've identified, you know, over 35 different theories about who are they and what are they. Right. You know, there's the time traveler hypothesis, the crypto terrestrial, the ultra terrestrial, the extraterrestrial, the, you know, sociological hypothesis. You know, like there's all these different theories people have. Uh -huh. When I map those out and I look at what are the different variables that they're highlighting, like, you know, where are they from? What's their kind of consciousness they have? What kind of bodies do they have? What's their intention? You know, when I look at like eight different variables about what's being described and I look at the three or four possibilities of like, oh, they're on this planet currently or they're from other planets or they're interdimensional. When I kind of map out all the variables, there's like 25 variables. And what's interesting is these theories, these 35 different theories that have emerged over the last two decades, essentially when you add them all together, they're accounting for these 25 different possibilities. So in other words, what seems to be happening is every conceivable combination of who they are is represented in kind of this growing list of who they might be. And it seems that actually all of them are potentially true in some sense, or at least a majority of them are true. Interesting. You know How insane is that? that? Like this guy himself has mapped out over two decades of research, um, 35 possible you know, species of alien, not even just species, but like possibilities and ways that they could be here. Bro, and then he's like, every every one of those is a, a possibility. Like, that's a bombshell. You know, so that there are ultra terrestrials, there are um, crypto terrestrials, there are extra terrestrials, there are interdimensionals. Like, all of this seems to be happening, right? And it's kind of this Pandora's box. And this is partly why some people have certain experiences with some of those, and other people have other experiences with, you know, different sets, right? And, and then you kind of end up arguing, well, wh who's right? Well, actually, I think the cosmos is so diverse and creative, there's a good chance we're likely interacting with all of those different possibilities. Well, I mean, 
when it comes to an individual's perception of something that happened or an individual's experience, if they believe something, I mean, you can't deny that, but you can't say that there's extraterrestrials. There's absolutely, there's no evidence, right? We have zero evidence that there's any sort of life from outside the earth. Yes. Now this is where it gets spicy. You can even see by the smirk on the dude's face right now. He's like, you've just set me, you've literally off. So no. Um, it's interesting because you you see this these positions like there's no evidence and there's a lot of evidence right and and you have this back and forth there is a lot of evidence um is there a lot of scientific evidence um no scientific evidence is a higher bar and yes like there's still things need to be done um to to meet that um standard if we talk about legal evidence there's plenty of evidence that would satisfy um, you know, definitions of evidence in a legal court of law. Now, this is interesting because he's, at, he's hit the nail on the head. Like, there are two sides of it. No evidence, lots of evidence. And, you know, depending on how you look at it, like, you could be presented with evidence, no evidence. And depending on your perception of it is determines what side you sway to. So for me, I would have been no evidence back before uh, before January. But since all this research that I've done, I would then sway towards evidence because technically there is no firm evidence that we've got. But when you look deeper into it and you've got these arrow reports that are baseless, you've got this footage that's being released by the Pentagon and they're saying that they can't actually identify it any the, the crafts within it, then you've actually got evidence. But on on a technical scale, it classes as no evidence because there's no backing of it. But when you look at it deeper, it is truly ev it's it sways back and forth all the time. Right. And Can you give an example. Well, you know, like witness testimony, um, you know, so in a scientific context, it, it doesn't hold a lot of water mm. in a in a legal context. It can hold a lot of water, you know, and so you can convict someone, you know, without a weapon, you know, without the murder weapon, you know, based on witness testimony and uh, circumstantial evidence and a lot of other things. Right. If you took the, the case of are there ETs, flesh and blood ETs to the court, present all the evidence you should win. There's, there's enough evidence to get a, you know, an, an affirmative conviction that that's the case. If you take it to a scientific lab, hmm. you're, you're going to have a hard time, you know, meeting the standards of, of scientific veracity. So, so part of what's going on is we have, we have different views of what counts as real and what counts as evidence. Um, there's, well, for evidence, for if you want to prove something exists, you have to have some sort of physical evidence of it. Right. There's a lot of physical evidence with the phenomenon, right? You know, so like with, um, so like you take um, abductees, people who have experiences of being abducted. And, you know, and so there's, there's no smoking gun. So I think this is part of your point. You're pointing out there's no smoking gun. I'm saying you're right. There isn't a smoking gun. We don't have that yet. Unless, you know, Gary Nolan and his team, you know, are able to get the government to roll out, you know, the, you know, one of the crafts, you know, that we have, mm -hmm. you know, and hangar, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, so we're waiting for the smoking gun. But we don't need the smoking gun to be able to look at all the other evidence and use scientific methodologies and, and logical methods of deduction and induction to arrive at a, a very probable conclusion based on that evidence, just as like we would in a court of law, right? So there's archeological evidence, there's sociological evidence, there's lots of experience or reports, there's, you know, um, there's, you know um, there is physical evidence, like the burns um, in the grass that Chris Bledsoe showed, mm. right? You know, um, even Travis Walton, you know, when they went and they studied the, the tree growth of the rings where that incident occurred. And there was an anomaly mm -hmm. with how the trees that were closer to where, you know, the event occurred grew in a different rate than the other trees farther out. So because of radiation, right? Uh, that, yeah, that's the assumption um, there. You know, there have been implants, there are scars, there's body marks, you know, like there's, um, you know, there's scratches on cars, you know, there's like, there's a lot of like physical evidence, but it's not a smoking gun, but we should be careful not just to dismiss all that physical evidence just because it's not a smoking gun. Now, this is so true, um, but obviously you're never gonna truly, you know, 
you're never going to get a skeptic to be on board without that smoking gun. All right, so without the actual footage, if an abductee comes along, for example, and says, I've been abducted by an alien, this scar's turned up, this scar's turned up, this scar's turned up, and I've got all this bruising, and it wasn't there last night when I went to bed, for example, you're going to be like, well, that's great, but how, like, you know, you there, there's a lot of, like, you know, mental kind of chains that you'd go down, like, you know, you'd have to look at history and all the rest of it. But if you if that person then turned up and said, I've got this scar, this scar, this scar, and all this bruising, and here's the video evidence of me being abducted, it's a completely different ball game. The, the, the entire, like, it, I caught it on my ring doorbell, for example. I caught it on my home security. I managed to sneakily record it. It's a different ball game because you have the physical evidence that that truly happened. But when you combine it with all the other elements, it's very suggestive, right? Very, very suggestive. Hmm. So <clears throat> out of all of the different hypotheses uh, uh, or all the different examples of what these different intelligences could be, was there any sort of um, underlying consistency between all of them or any kind of like common denominator across all of them? How many of them did you say there were? Like 40? There's like 35, 35 different theories that they are all over the board. You know, like right. some it's like ancient aliens or some it's, you know, mm. it's us from the future, right? Right, right, right. It's like some it's like they're from other star systems. No, they're from other dimensions. Like, oh, you know, they're, you know, so there's a lot of variety, um, you know, but it's, it's interesting that kind of in the course of human imagination, we've come up with all the possibilities, all the combinations are represented in that list of 37, mm -hmm. right? So you have an approach like SETI that says, you know, like, you know, there are probably, you know, um, life on other planets, but it's very far away right. and we're looking for radio signals and, you know, <laughs> we're trying to like, you know, kind of tune in to their channel and, and they're not coming up with, there's like nothing has come out of the SETI project basically over the last, you know, 40 plus years with a lot of funding. Right? And so it's interesting. You compare that with like kind of ufology, which has a lot of craziness in it. But when you pull away a lot of that craziness, there's still there's a lot of evidence. Right. You know, like you you line up, you get a lot of Chris Bledsoe's in the room, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like or you go and hang out with them, um, you know, and you. You have multi-witness reports. You have lots of multi-witness reports, you know, and, you know, and you, so there, there is quite a case to be made. Um, and, and again, I think for me, it, it often comes back down to, you know, different perceptions based on different subtle bodies, based on different subtle senses associated with those bodies. And because we are still tend to privilege our five senses in our physical body and we want physical evidence, that matches our you know vision and our hearing that we tend to have a very narrow view of what is evident right and so what does a broader but still very scientific and rigorous view of evidence look like that's able to include and compare experience or reports um, able to understand mm -hmm. how the brain works in relationship to this phenomenon right so like you know like gary's research on the basal um you basal know, ganglia, ganglia. Mm -hmm. and you know how there seems to be this hyper connectivity right so one could look at that to say well okay there's this hyper connectivity so people are just better at projecting or imagining these phenomenon or you could say no that's an antenna that actually allows them to perceive the phenomena so kind of the same data point could be used to argue for or against the phenomenon Right. You know, and so but then when you couple it with like a lot of this other kind of evidence, then, you know, and this is why I feel like the the government knows a lot more, at least sections of the government know a lot more than what they're letting on is because, you know, um, like <laughs> I was told by a CIA. Now, this is where it gets very, very interesting um, agent that they actually have a, a test to determine if you have alien DNA in your system, right? And so maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But this person's a trustworthy person. I, I don't have any reason to believe that they're pulling one over on me. But it's like, there's those kinds of things that get said by certain people who seem to have knowledge about these things that just kind of boggle your mind. You know, like Chris, you know, shared several of these kind of things in this interview with you where you just mm -hmm. end up scratching your head. And you're like, and there's nothing you can do with it. It's like, 
Well, until they show me the DNA test, you know, like I, I can't believe it. Did he give you any more details on that? Like, how do they get the test, and what is the what do they test for? No, no. But you know, there's you know, but so I think the whole idea of like evidence, like we need to like zoom out a little bit and go, hey, well, what do we mean by evidence? What kinds of evidence would count, and what combination of evidences? would be suggestive because I think the conversation too often is framed around the smoking gun and then that's used to dismiss a lot of otherwise important points and insights now I'm going to stop it there if you guys want to go and check out the full video obviously go over to the Danny Jones podcast and um, like I said before but it raises more questions than answers at this point you know DNA testing humans being tested with their DNA to see if it cross-references with extraterrestrial DNA. That is crazy. What if we all have little strands of extraterrestrial DNA, but it's just our, our makeup is so, you know, simple that we just haven't noticed it before. Like, this is mad. This is mad. Um, but what do you guys think? Are you an alien? Am I an alien? I probably am, I don't know. Um, I mean, my ADHD sometimes kicks off and I think I'm an alien, but what do you guys think of this whole situation? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to jump together, hit that like button if you have not already. Subscribe if you're new and tickle my little bell so you get notified of whenever we upload. And until next time, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed. I cannot wait to see you in the next one, and I'll speak to you later. Peace.